arguably one of the most important people we rugby heritage. If anything, I probably was close to tears and I was just fighting my tears back because why would you laugh at my dream? Mm. Mm. This year marks 30 years since I left Queens in 94. So I wanted to do something significant. Newspaper headline. New Springbok selection, thought selection was a joke. Hey, boy. Uh. That one was a nice lie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I miss it so much. Get on that bus and go prove that guy wrong. I know you can. And you did? Yeah. 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 Hatrick Heroes is sponsored by Dreamstream. To support us directly or get access to ad-free versions of our show, join us on the Dreamstream platform. A link to the how-to video is in the description. Morwen, hello, hi. Um, it's Hatrick Heroes again. We're in VK this time. Um, but first and foremost, guys, I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed. I'd like to thank everyone who shared. Please continue to support. Um, it was a great episode with the folks last week. Yeah, and the response was also amazing. Yeah, so just yeah. Just a bit of appreciation to them. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Um, so we decided to bring arguably one of the most important people, we rugby heritage of the Eastern Cape and South Africa. Um, maybe, maybe rugby is even a bit too limiting in South African sports. South really. African sports, yeah. Nah? Um, Sipete Apa Umi Chaupra Keiza, um, the first ever Black Springbok, yeah, um, to wear the green and gold jersey. A uh, person that uh, led the way for your colleagues, for everyone who played after that 1999 year. Prakeza, Mika, Zega, Molo Pudomkul. The introduction. Menzikiwuchiwumtusoondiatemendoomba. <laughs> Prakeza, um you 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 have such an interesting story um being a spring pork, but it didn't start there. Um it started as an Andrews. Well, tell us, Jane Lali, you found the No, I call it an Andrews. Let's call it Lali. Um, for starters, that call is called dinner four. Kuba and then kula guma kula. So I'm just doing kula now. We're not allowed now. We're so loose. I'm just score. So when Vukaksa signed, I'm a new fuller. Look, Kusha, come. And then last <laughs> <laughs> so then move permanent find out from the chomiak. Uba been damp is called a good thing. I think notice so yeah, permanent move into a scholar. I can stop there because the bed I'm proper registered. 
Then I think at about five, six, um, the army to Bugale rugby high school. Yeah, he play high school, Bugala go your practice. I'm talking to Tosa, me, Sapa. A water don't mean Bamba Funda, Pa, a man in the Funda, a free mantle, or you as a Pumlani, I think. So that's about corny fixtures as call, and that's again a rugby. Uh, funny enough, rugby is the first sport in Kale, you understand. Before the ball, mm. before you saw, I understood how to play rugby. Card. What's rugby? The boy is calling the Brunazic the Monday. Pretty poor look over choose for my pep. That's business on case. Such a poor look over choose selling any syrup. That is what such a rugby. Any syrup. Yeah, be a car into a rugby. Well, because these stories finding in a zirag in a soga comb. Um, Kumbula and Lano that I mean by Missok, a plant, and um, Bandin Zuko, who was standing calm. Then I left feet as been. So in far west, Balin, long ago, he caught you, Paul, I peck pass. Ebo, go coming on to an Arab pin, Mosu Paula, your daughter down, and we get twenty two drop out. Ebo, I bal as he tried. So, I'm going to get a little bit of a call. I'm going to get a little bit of a call. I'm going to get a little bit of a call. I'm going to get a little bit of a call. I'm going to get a little bit of a call. I'm going to get a little bit of a call. I'm going to get a little bit of a call. I'm going to get a little bit of a call. So, that was my. That's why rugby was always going to be rugby. Mm. Not, not anything else. And so Iraq began this out on the in the Kale we simulate our salali and lim um the puma is laling uh kuba bazal be kalabele in the kuba uh um shabam kulu pandap uh salalin if you ya ko release with this dab salapelali na bone quince and don't go like that. So bafuna jin poom and bone ka pantle goes and dab but once and don't that's why I get not a moment with down clock and tat at the time, but you shall go in front of the corner. The air goes call up to a fair field. Cry fair field, hang in a rugby on a car. I as if you fair field. A lap at teacher's college down game, him tat to sugar and as again. A walk or cool out warm game and cool as a teacher's college. A good tar of a case, good tar of all of his age. <laughs> so anyway, we found a park. We go rugby, and the computer we want to get like piggy bank. Yeah, set bank fin. Yeah, you shape your rugby. Hmm. Mm. But I'm not going to find it so safe. I'm not going to get a mall. I'm not going to because the piggy bank is angry and some some some. Hey, hey, I buy ball. I'm not going to school. I'm not going to play rugby. So you shall like a little rugby, Anna. I'm going to fix chairs into a break time. Activity by finance in the field. What one thing is a ball? I plastic here I put on. Go by a clean little into a bit. So see, cabin job. Yeah, by law, into a break time activity into a rugby. Finance in the field. And then some guys are cool. Are cool. Interest here, my own game part of the day. Babe, Naira, part of the day. But the issue for him na. The aptitude test ya pa. Zange di pass. Kwa lugu elali. Pimike kanye. Kwa lufundi suis nge zinge stos. Kwa lugu. Kwa lugu. Kwa lugu. Kwa lugu. Fige fe field. Ya bangu lo yinti yinti. Uza mubwa mpisi kese. Nga bambigi. I think fe field. Then pa minya ke mibi. So nda beto zis nge zinge 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 Tangena e New Horizons. New Horizons is sport basis. This is parallel and we go to sport in New Horizons because New Horizons are essential in our class. New Horizons are color. Is it class the containers? Nenanzik, ne try walling. Containers work for no goes. Nenanzik, ah, containers just into turned into classrooms. Oh. Um, the opposite Nenanzik is child. Echo. It's a reggae, yes, it's cool at the time. 
I think we're going to go on a little more business. As chairs now, figure that. Safe, 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 safe. We live. We just go quick. We just go quick. See, man, go look at us. Let me go on up. As chairs, bang up, bang up. And yeah, we bonus so much cash. Go back home, do you want us to get as chairs? Zang, as a ballet, as a musk. We go more than jack. As a school, I go botting. So we played J Sock as an enhance again in your horizons. To a point where we so started. So quite a bit of the And there is some. Was there that you left me? I got was a coin in. Then the one the lag and the family tennis as well. We are familiar with Kongo Kwanitu. Um, we are not cool with tennis. So this Tata, I guess, so practice. I'm a tennis court set to be the same. So boom, opposite. He Nancy, he factories are quite big. Was a big industrial area. I'm so boom, where there was a massive pep factory. When we go, when we buy, when we cars, when we buy, we have a factory. So there was productivity. I want to be the cashy. I want to be the location. And they are kumbola. Hip hop, na? It's a slang. It's a slang. So many names. Yeah, so many calls. So if you want to get a corner, you can get a pass. So you, you, Kuo was a very industrial and productive hub of the former Transkei. Once I be on all of them, so that's why I think I enjoyed life at Kuo. Um, is because people were working, people were busy, and not we could be children. Since the late late, since so so no, I've been just going to go. Exactly. Well, and, mm. and that kind of stuff. What I mean, I got the eighty seven, then go nine ninety one. Was the is again question yako yes Saint Andrews. Then ninety one I went to Saint Andrews. So in the end, the Saint Andrews is that he told me I'm at the time at school. Um, was taken or was accepted at Kingswood, and so I wanted to go with him. But okay, obviously, scholars did not say as he is. I think if he's a certain interest, well, more than a price, a price tag, a track at time. Mm. So, yeah, yeah by alone negotiation, okay, go nineteen ninety over. I want to go HF Malas Tibani. But I want to go to the one in the end of the world. I want to go to the end of the world. I want to go to the end of the world. I want to go to the end of this thing. So, I want to go to the end of the world. I want to go to the end of the world. I want to go to the end of the world. Mm. At least he can tell us. So that's why he's so bad in the chap. Instead of one, yeah. Um, the other is the name Drusky on ninety one, just for Unyak. This is grade ban. You can go for a case. Uh, standard seven, grade nine. Grade nine, mm. okay. Grade nine. So I did San Andrews for a year. San Andrews was called under private schools, which was a half term. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So. I have to be doing a boy because it was. I have to was almost like a long weekend, you know. So it was far for that to drive from. That's why. Get to my. Get to my. Just to fetch me for four days and have me and boy. So when you find and go to the half term, but this particular one to go to okay. I go see a tour of people. So we just talk so we get. I must get straight up. And when the appointment, not at the show to Queens mm. for the interview. Yeah, and we go to Queens, figure bullies first, and the office, and the report, and the chap. So we can tell one, pull my office in, and pull my auntie, push the phone, and lose sports, or maintain the uniform. And the sound, we're mm. in. On the spot. On the spot. <laughs> so, two of you inform by the new sport. The sport kind of size, yeah. I'm going to get out of there. I'm going to get out of there. I would be heartbroken if, if it happened like that because I'm going to get out of 
So I think again, I was a person and also then next year is definitely coming. Oh, but now it's at least you're so prepared. She agrees to buy then the rest of the year when Paul and get to see you. You could sign a phone, I don't want to lie. I don't want to go to Queens. But yeah, long story short, that would be 91 St. Andrews, 92 and Africa Queens. St. Andrews, Danyago, Nepa, Buso is Dala and Yanirak, Pipa. They said Bonaga, Lingati, Kungaku first team. Hopes. So he born into a first team of Binja, no Ganye, who was at Alange. So, St. Andrews, um, what was fun was that he, every evening we played touch rugby. Wow. Mm. So, every constant. evening it was almost like a religion, the touch rugby. Before, so we were in a hostel for homework and stuff like that. It was always a game of touch rugby. And we always step up and do a bar. Step and hand off. <laughs> Because it does rugby as St. Andrews was two hands below the waist. Oh, okay. okay. So, we have to touch it. It's not in the world. In the world. It's under the way too. Oh, it was a hand off. It's under the sea wine. I'm touching the sea wine. I don't touch like you play on. So, that that taught me. Oh, yeah. There was that kind of skill development. It was one of the things that I met when playing in Antic, especially at 12. Mm. Because... Bending, I the crash ball was not my thing, you know. Uh, and see a straight that to step the last minute and that take us a space. And then was a turn a hand off and go walk because then they found up. So, anyway, Kofiga e trials. So, I'm playing under 15. Kofiga trials, the rugby. Um, Kubu's were the Talebi position. Ne? Because Galogo is what we simulated rugby. Yes. As was position, a structure, what you were doing. Then a cool and a friend as I saw. Then a fair field, the pinned as a guarantee into fine rugby. So Kabu's position up and yay, thing at his. They are cool, but I'm not going to win. And from one day, we will cover, 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 less is what you're going to have in the next thing as in the position. Because otherwise, I think if I, if by then, Dan Saint Yazir, I'd be one to fifteen and in a formal structure, I would have played 12 from the get go or 10. Yeah, well, so on the IT wing, yeah, well, the far away wing to be trials and the 15F. 15F as in 15A, B, C, D, E, F. You, you have a title from F2. You have a title from F2. You have a title from Next round of trials, then I went D team. And then final round of trials, I was in the C team. And then I had a activity. So that part of the C team is an Andrews. That was a normal fixture. I think I played two games that I would be team. And I played most of the season with B team. I had, oh, I can't remember, but it was very few games with E team. As a San Andrews. And then, but by the time I played a team, a teacher, I am the Africans, oh, Mr. Jacobs, why coach a first team? So this guy, why Ted and just straight to our next to the first team? Mm. Yeah, well. So initially, I just took as why in Ireland, he just took a liking to me. We class like Africans, because I like Africans are good. Next, but this guy like him, so I ain't done that. He's a trans guy, I got local. So I ain't done that. Mr. So Nyan, but he just kept constantly saying this thing. He even called me my, my winger, Green Bond. I chong says this thing, the jungle of first team, jungle of wings is la la pa, and uh, they'll share with us rugby. Easy, you know, Nyan, the chap. 
Corn do you want now? Yeah, corn in the novella. Yeah, and that thing became a proper dream to chase. But I'll start playing first team as a 16 year old. I think it's one of the reasons I despise the idea of going to Queens. Because I so by the time they reconcile the whole idea of okay you must see Queens, it doesn't mean it's the death of Upupa, the first mm-hmm. in rugby. You understand? Because I think that year is an to sit beating Queens, the first team you come. Mm-hmm. So I looked at that as like I suka. You know, it's a hands first team pa. So when I got to Queens, okay, I, the dream was, or the ambition, because it pooped and dance into Pizunga. So the ambition was first team when I arrived at Queens in 92. Yeah, I figured Queens 92, Prakeza. But when I was in the past, I was in the past. So Queens, it was a multiracial 91. Mm. So when I got there in 92, there was already a generation that was a year old. Mm. Yeah, born. But yeah, very small in numbers, very mute in activities and voicing their opinions. Keep to yourselves. Queens, Queens was still Queens and white school. So uh, apartheid regime that just converted. So a yeah, transitional period of, of transforming is it. So ninety two, it was still fresh in the way, black and white in mm-hmm. Queens, and it was still a massive minority when I arrived in ninety two. And go go, I must push the ambition of first team. Mm. 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 It's not a lot of people who figure transition, new school. Kum the best lele last year. first team. U figure out to Sanja and in between Abu and the Prakes. Yeah, yo, it was it was tricky in our sequence because the effect of the oppression of the black person was such that the black person didn't see himself as an achiever as a result of that. I arrived to that. So when I when I got to Queens we had the summer sport activity um which I registered for athletics and tennis and I never got to a one. So so if the athletics coach is looking for me to go tennis, if the tennis coach, coach is, is looking, looking for me, me to go <laughs> athletics. <laughs> and I just trained for rugby. So in Vuga at five AM to pull my corner, run to the Perry Dam, around the Perry, come back, shower. You had to take cold showers then uh, because you're a new boy. Mm. And then the hot showers were for, for, you know, it's, it's, it not, it's great. It's great. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's <laughs> but get out because I could have a warm shower because everybody's still sleeping when I get got back. So that's what that was me. Training for rugby, that's what I'm waiting for. And then comes the trial season. So in the Queen's Year trials, names get put up on the board. Who's born which team you are under and then trials start prior to W Higgs and about you move on from there. We just happened to be sitting this is the day before they put the names up. So sitting in my dorm, a room eight, a cornot. At the bottom was room number eight, room yam. Sitting there is Namajida, you know. So we hung together, Namajida Miyam. And we didn't like hanging out with the AEE targets as a Woodson. Because walking into Woodson, you just felt unwelcome. So they used to come hang out there with us at Connaught. Okay. So that day we were all hanging out in my room and all I learned your trials. And everybody, okay, Plunyaga was all, what team do you see yourself? And everybody starts talking. But to go on, I remember before it came to me because it just so happened when the last person to give my opinion of where I'm going to play. And I just remember thinking because the last person 
who was ambitious, was aiming for the sixth team. That <laughs> guy, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that thing hit me. Like, it, mm. it was a sad moment for me. Because, boy, I, I'm guessing, but realistic, get chances out. Well, the last year, last so they year. know exactly what, what the land, mm. the land is, and, I, and before they asked me, I remember thinking, sixth is the highest now. Team, is it that high that I can't make it? Or is it just a question of I'm too black to play any team of significance. Mm. So now imagine I'm, this is going through my mind while my turn has arrived to say where I'm going to play. Mm. Now you've got these thoughts. I don't want to say something and I embarrass myself. But at the same time, I don't want to say something that is way below my ambition. Are you not proud enough of what your ambition is? Yeah, well, you get through all this. Mm. So eventually I was like, I would have played first team as an envoy. Yeah, well. So I said first team. Salah is. Oh, everybody was on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. How <laughs> <I'm> much <at, laughs> as a queens? <laughs> as a clerk. <laughs> oh, everybody was on the floor. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, as a kid, you have an embarrassing moment. Mm. Right. And it stays if, with you. If a woman blow up, your cheeks would be pink because of blushing and you immediately wish the ground would open this is so I know I know we did it like doing why did I even say this you understand well, how can you believe so, in yourself so much yeah so I, I mean as a child you don't even think about that level of self-belief mm. it's more about I want this but it's it's funny it's, it's ridiculous to somebody else how do I reconcile doubling down mm. on that ambition mm. and say, I've been Zala, man. Yeah, well. But I'm Zala. I'm serious. I'm really serious. Really, really, but that's, that's what you're aiming for. I want, I want the first team. Yeah, well. So after they'd finished laughing and they could see I wasn't laughing. Mm. And if anything, I probably was close to tears and I was just fighting my tears back. Why would you laugh at my dream? Mm. Mm. So anyway, laughter dies down. Everybody gathers themselves, and then they realize, no man, you seriously, sir. Yeah, if we want to first it, And we yeah. must remember at that time, let him go for a case, and no one has ever achieved it. Mm. That's why he prays this Lega, and it's because. Nyani, you'd think it far-fetched because it's never been seen before or achieved. But also for you, and I think it could have also been difficult to reconcile with the Queen's culture because you're coming from a teacher who believed in you so much before you even kicked a ball for your first team. But when I my winger, and now why is he? He appears Zaku. As he was born. As he born. Yeah. So, yeah, it was quite a moment where they eventually gather themselves, look at me, and I think a few of them got to a moment where they're like, this guy's serious. But shame, he doesn't realize. But well, OP. Well, this thing is a pipe dream. And they said it. No black person will play for first team here. So those words, and this is from the white kids at Queens, the first time they were said. It's very good. It's a Puma Africai. That helped me. That statement helped me. And the time it came in, I think was perfect. Because like I say, I'm in, mo in a moment where I'm fighting my tears. I'm feeling embarrassed. I'm feeling ridiculed. And then and, 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 and that statement came. And I remember having this overwhelming sense of, I will show all of you, including Abba. Nipkumba, you take keepers at first team. That was the first thing I immediately, emotionally and mentally resolved to. Right? So then I asked, if I'm if I'm if I were to be realistic, man, mm. what would you advise me to aim for? 
Because the question was, what are you, which team are you aiming for? Mm. Not who are you, where are you going to play? Mm. You know? Okay, okay. Realistically, what should I be aiming for? And sixth, fifths came up. You know? Okay, fine. Yeah. Fifths, let's see. Trials came, played in the sixth team. And then, oh... First team coach was Mr. Rasmus, my hostel master, Upap. And sixth team coach was Mr. Yonke, if I'm, I stand to be correct, but I think it was Mr. Yonke. And I remember during the trial, when Mr. Rasmus came onto the field, stopped the trial, and then asked me to move to the first team. And Mr. Yonke took exception, where you and I, what the, you know, and this one said, he's in my hostel for starters, so he belongs to me. <laughs> so I made the first team to start off with. Need a photo studio? The Dreamstream Photo Studio includes a 2.7 meter PBC backdrop in black and white and is available for only 115 rands per hour. You can also rent a Canon R6 and lights. All rentals are for studio use only. Terms and conditions apply. Contact studio at dreamstream.co.za Got injured first game. For the first team. Eh. Um, I remember... Um, my roommate William he played on the other wing you know? so he kicked the ball across I chased it and it bounced and I tried to sneak a punch on the guy while he was jumping for the ball but I missed so I hit the guy on the on the chin, but I connected with this big bone in Nazik, his slash. So I had a hairline crack, Nazik a fracture there. So that's me done for four weeks. Ordered lamb. Eventually, my dad convinced her to come watch my first game at least. Mama, I'm from Nubugel. Yeah, but my dad's argument was that I'm done. At least make the effort. No way, one was between the bull. Go when I'm leaving in the ambulance for the hospital, my parents are driving in because my parents are always late. They're driving in, Scutani gate in, that they show the gate, Scutana point is better. It's better than about your bull. Down the corridor was While I'm waiting for x-rays. Why uh, front here? It's a long passage, pa. I heard a voice before I saw her. Dandy <laughs> Teddy <laughs> Those are the first words I heard. <laughs> and then the nurse laughs and says, That must be your mother and did yo, not your mother. And my dad won't have been for work. We have too much. Because <laughs> I'm that kind of conversation. But anyway, fast forward to two weeks after the injury, I get tired of this plaster of Paris and I cut it off and just leave the forearm part of it. And then every practice, your fourth team, far behind the hostel, I would go there, play touch with the guys. And in, if the fours were doing lineouts and scrums and they needed the scrummer, then when the scrum up goes to the forwards, it back line, play practice in a scrum up. So I used to pass for them. There go. Then when I took this thing off, oh, coach were fourth team, Mr. Swart, then kept me with the fourth team. And I came back from injury into fourth team. I pay a Going to 93. Go grade 11. Go. Grade 11. Mm. Hey, I don't want to play for 13, man. Hey, well, there's a tradition of red laces, what, 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 what. You never vibe with 13 of whatever sort, but I don't And it's playing at the rec as well. I, I, that, that didn't appeal to me. I just didn't want to play for the 13. 
So now I know over to change my for a second thing. Yeah, bro. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Nike 93 came, played trials, got myself into the second team. Okay. From the trials. From the trials. Okay. Now now we're moving close to the stream. Yeah, bro. Halfway through June holidays. No. What holiday is Cape Schools week? It's June. June. It's June holidays. Yeah. Now we're coming to June holidays, Cape Schools week at Selwyn College. Um, I'm playing seconds. Yeah, but yeah, your form is good. Uh, now uh, you must pick an extended squad. Uh, oh, okay. I was about to ask, but in seconds, are they playing also at Cape Schools? or? Kukaro <clears throat> first team, now you must pick an extended squad. So I knew I had a chance. Yeah, bro. And Mike Fennell called me. Hey, chap, you've been making all the right noises, but Ngoku caught somewhere between Wena and another player. Yeah, bro. Obviously, white kid, black kid. He has to make that decision. Mm. Yeah, bro. Um, so, before June holiday, I was always hostile cross country. Yeah, bro. Run this cross country to beat the guy or take you to Cape Schools. Of Nagushele, chap. Now you're with the same words. Okay. I'm gonna try. Okay. I'm gonna try. Uh, now you're trying to talk to the Cape Schools week. She had a chap cross country. So then Zanga, how are you? Okay, sharp. Hey. <coughs> Road running is not my favorite thing, but now we're gonna see those morning runs to bury them and back. Mm. Yeah, well. Hey, get a message home. I wanna go and go cell phones go. So I must hurry to get to town, get to the taxi rank, and yell is not taxi power. I check off the line, two million message. I need new taxis. But I comes. Yeah, well. Then the message was come back. Okay, yellow sports. Okay, only to find but this guy didn't even run the cross country coach you if you know first teams i select others wins Mm. And I remember, because that's go to almost after cross country, and then Tina we had to come back to school like uh, in a matter of two days to get to this Nancy Cape Schools week. So I got home, no, I got to the hostel and I looked at these things. I was like, yeah, Azuzu Paula is way in time for the trip. That that is scary and that's sick. I was top Z. It's half black. Go mm. now they are raw. Okay. Go, I can't go back. This mm. is hell. Because I'm recreating lingo. The yeah. Yeah. way ends and all, yes. Anyway, we tell African land, let's go to, okay, I'm emotional at home. But hey, the tournament is one second. I'm going to use blisters, man. My mom, what that is cause? What that is my bandage? Fuck, so good, lad. That works as in fifty four. Hmm. Never seen that thing. I've tried it after, it never worked. It never worked. <laughs> what you put on that thing, but what that <laughs> cause now? You could Mother's touch. What that <laughs> cause of bandages are waiting to work as in your camera. Hmm. Damn, you could pass a second. Oh, oh, mommy, I've never seen that thing. The rag thing, you put seconds. I was on a choice. I've been a good seconds. Are you the first black person to uh, play for second team or was the one? Seconds was me. 
was a guy also on the table most of the time. Mm. Um, so good seconds, I wasn't the first non-white. I was a guy who played hooker. So Oregon Wiley was a colored guy. So he he had gotten into into seconds. Then when we got to seconds na good team, um we'll be already there. We'll be so equal now. They established. Yeah. So Cape Schools Week selection made me the first African Queens to be a part of the first. Only to find what class three or kids schools. I'm actually starting the first game of this ball. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we extended squad in G. I started. Just start. It did be okay, first team. Paltrow. You were playing against Pal team. Pal team is all. Wow. The last time Queens beat Pal team. Check. You won. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> This keep us at school we go cuz no was up in noon. The people them. No be 14 or 11. 11. 11. I always wear 11. Okay. And to my own mom. Oh 16 I wore in 94 on tour. Did a Devon tour. That's when I moved to center. Actually I can't remember how the conversation went if I suggested to Mike Fennell or he came to me to ask if I would be keen. I, I, I just don't remember. I'm playing center. I had to move to center. But I remember um, Crystal Dutoy was playing 12. When I was no, number 16. And I'm uh, number 16 with 13. We Queens, ne? Yes. Yeah. 13 and 16. Yeah. But, yeah. So, Crystal was leaving for a cricket tour to New Zealand. And then Ukwane was in this dilemma. But now, like I say, I can't remember if I approached him that you know, don't stress. The call. Try me out and then if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. But yeah, however it happened, he decided he's going to give me a midfield for the tour. And I remember arriving in Durban, we met, ooh, we went to uh, Kings Park and I met with ooh, Dick Muir. You know, Dick Muir, old former Springbok. Former Springbok. Met with Dick Muir, a guy, and my friend had spoken to him. But when we arrived, can he just take me aside and just chat? Yeah, and Dick came to me, Nogo Nogo. Then he starts talking to me about playing midfield and that kind of stuff. And he actually made a lot of sense, eh? Yeah, like a lot of stuff he said, I applied on tour. And I ended up being voted uh, man, of the, man of the trip, man of the Tournament. tournament. Okay. <coughs> I was a player of the tour when we returned from, from that. But the unfortunately, I had to go back to wing um, because Abu Christo came back. So I finished mm. the season at uh, on the wing again. But this is 94 though. So 93 was quite massive for me. It was my first taste of first team rugby. Got to beat, you know, in big schools. Did and you make border? No, 94, I made Porter. You made Porter, uh, 94. 94. Okay. 93, I didn't make it. And it's Lalani Gray College was during your time. Bloom, Gray yeah. Bloom. And I think it was a fixture. It was a regular fixture, yes. Hinjan. Hinjan, a fixture. It's a fixture, eh? So, Gray Bloom, 93, playing second. I'm playing, this is now, we've come back from Cape School Week. I'm playing first team. And then we've got Grey Bloom coming to Queenstown. Yeah, well. Hey. My friend calls me. Hey, I'm not going to say this for this thing. Small, bro. I'm too small in size. Kids are big. This is an accident waiting to happen. So I, 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 I want the fixture because I know Grey Bloom doesn't have mm. a player of color. And I know it's going to be an issue for me. Mm. And, and so I already can see my advantage in the game. Yeah, well. But low, when Kalang is size, yeah, I'm going to get hurt. And, 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 yeah, well. Which is fine. I mean, at the time, the mind accepted that. Mm. It's only in hindsight, I think. Wow. 
Do I like shield? Trying to protect me from something else. Mm, mm. Like shield. Mm. But gay, whatever gay excuse he gave me at the time, it worked because it, it it really upset me. I was really really upset, and I I I, I think I, I said to my dad, I think I want to stop playing rugby. And I explained to him, and he was like, "Kalubichop, if you stop, then whatever injustice you think happened, then yeah, yeah, win." So as a as you will never be so then then it falls to somebody else to fix it. So but again it's up to you. And I remember Mike Fennell's parting words were prove me wrong. Okay. Grey Bloom comes to Queenstown. Grey Bloom cherries the second team unbeaten. Averaging eighty points per game against every school yeah. they've played mm. against. Coach at the second team, Neil Crawford, mm. passionate Queen in there. Uh, that could not handle a loss to Grey Bloom. Upeti could have lose to Salvon and you'll get over it. It would take months to get over losing to Grey Bloom. As a coach under 15A, he was in Grey Bloom. A Google is broken for a month. Okay. Got right. That's just how he never liked losing to Craig Bloom. So shame our poor coach in second team decided to go drown his sorrows and unfortunately met the arm of the law. So he spent the night <laughs> the night in, in juvenile detention. Okay. And we're playing Craig Bloom the next day, Tina. So we played against Craig Bloom without a coach. His second team. Just yeah, to yeah. Yeah. It's a cool it's like yeah. On Monday, when they're reading out the scores, the only team to beat Grey Bloom on Saturday was the second, second team. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. So I've now only lost once to Grey Bloom. <laughs> and then the following year, obviously, we went to Bloom. Mm-hmm. And we beat them there. Wow. Hey, Queens was a serious side. Yay. Yeah. To win in Bloomfontein. <laughs> to win in Bloomfontein. Yeah, it was a serious side. Nani, nani, I'm going to train more. Ah, you say it's a pass. I'll say it's a pass. Okay, okay. Yeah, of course. 94, I'm going to say, you're beating Grey Bloom. I'm taking, I'm thinking, Oba, you had a good side. When you went to Grey Bloom. Yeah, we had a good, we had a decent 94 team, huh? Eh? Mm. Um... But 94, uh, guys like Connie Van Kulvitz were playing, uh, David also played. So 93 was the year that I was the only person there. Okay, okay. And then 94, there was a little flavor in the team. Are you thinking at this point, Springboks? Or at least professional or professional? No, I mean, 94, it was all of a craving week, mm. you know, honestly. It was all about Craven Week. We were a good team at the time. I was quite dominant, you know, in most of the fixtures, um, playing wing, you know. So, yeah, Craven Week is possible. You know, and I remember we played Craven Week trials on the rack um, against uh, Selborne, I mean, against the uh, East London school side, we were Queenstown school side, so Hunclip. And us, mm. yeah, well, Delaray to pre played for the Queenstown school side, yeah, well. and yo, we beat those guys like something sad, eh? Because <laughs> <laughs> this London school was mainly so boy, mm. okay, yeah. So, I then made the border side. I remember I was told, I think on a Friday. By Mike Fennell that I made the border side. But the Saturday we had a, a practice in East London. Okay, the border practice. The border yeah. schools practice. Yes, yeah. The Saturday. But that Friday, that, but that week, I had an invite to go to Matric Downs. Oh. For the Saturday. Okay, okay, okay. But now I have to cancel on the Friday. No. How much is that? Like, chap, you choose to go play rugby and I'm going to metric dance here. Same time. Same time. 
If or when it's a non event to choose you, that's you. <laughs> that's you. Mm. That you have. Yeah, I'm a up. Mountain. <laughs> mountain. A mountain, man. Yeah, so I made boarding school. Went to Craven Week. Yeah, it's uh, Newcastle in KZN. Now, Border Craven Week side in 94 made a few or achieved a few milestones in history because it was the first. Porter school side to beat EP in like a 20 year gap. Oh. Um, mm. And then became the first unbeaten Porter side at Craven Week. Um, we beat Lions, we beat Pumas, and then we drew with EP in the final, funny enough. So it was quite a decent Porter side as well. So from no, that's, there. That's actually mm. impressive. Yeah, from there I made uh, the SA School Academy side. And, uh, but. The Craven Week trip also almost didn't happen because um, when we were leaving, getting on the bus, also all our practices were at Southern College, and all coach <coughs> the border was a tail coach at the time. Um, so when we were getting in the bus to leave, so we had one more session we practice at Southern, and then washed, pack our bags, get in the bus. So as the bags are in the bus and we are we are getting in the bus, one of the journalists asked the coach to name his starting lineup for the first game. Good craving week. Yeah, well, now this team had already been announced to us, and I'm starting. But when it reads the team there, I'm on the bench. Mm. Now I'm the only African left on the side. The other other non whites is Brendan Whittles, who was a tail. You know? Mm. So I thought it's rubbish. I took my bag and I left. Left and the I camp? Was, I was I was leaving the bus. Yeah, I'm by Yago Craven Week. Okay. But now I have to walk to Kangali takes in Buelas what? Yeah. And if it wasn't for Omi Uperi Ferrer, Tataka Frank Ferrer. I probably wouldn't have made SE Schools Academy. I probably wouldn't have gone further with my rugby. Because he came after me, right? Mighty. A gang. It's, like, it's almost like he knew what Fennel said to me when he dropped <clears throat> against Craig Bloom. Because he said, get on that bus and go prove that guy wrong. I know you can. And you did. You did, but Keith. Mm. So, yeah, man. Those are the journeys that a person has, has journeyed. <laughs> in this life of rugby, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, very interesting story as well. So. And then you leave Queens. with this ambition, yeah, rugby, with this dream. I, so there was a bursary letter offer that arrived, but it was an Afrikaans from Stellenbosch. Okay, we're not considering Pat. <laughs> because the stories are that everything is taught in Afrikaans. Mm. So you must sit in Afrikaans lecture, come back, shine the dictionary, translate it. Okay, it was opened and closed immediately. Okay. okay. But now I've got nothing else in terms of offers and what have you not. Hey. Yeah, I made this school academy, but it's not easy schools. Mm. Okay. Yeah, well, Cut it. Now, this is the ambition. This is cool. I can make that easy school side because we played ESA schools as a curtain raiser to a Lion Cup final uh, between the Lions, Netbooms, and Ellis Park. So, ESA schools played ESA school academy as a curtain raiser. Now, oh, man, I can make that side. So. To post my trick. Yeah, well. Spoke to his caller, the post my trick. My parents weren't really for it, so they made a deal. If it's on Bursary, it's not going to cost us a cent because we still have your sister that was a school with. Then by all means, you post my trick. But if it's going to need our money, unfortunately, my friend. Yeah, it's a bad plan. plan. Yeah, well. So we spoke to the school and the school agreed. Yeah, well. But yeah, unfortunately, because 
of uh, discipline issues for others that end up blaming you when they get caught that deal fell through and it fell through on principle mm. on my side well, when it happened and the guy used my name to get out of the fix he was in then the headmaster decided to and in my absence he never took the time and courtesy Look to my find man. out uh -huh. from now what the story was, right? So when I get the report back, it says, I'm welcome to come back for post matric. I'm going to be in detention for the first term and the pressure falls away. And he's holding my matric report until such time I come. Now, the ambulance overlook when the, all of this is happening. So my dad is back and forth dealing with this. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. so my dad comes to me and says, Hey, chap, so and so and so Come on, if somebody does something, we was we were still in grade 11, and then they'll hide and say, Influence Yunglo because they think I'm not coming back, so it's not mm -hmm. going to affect mm -hmm. me. And yet, I was coming back for post matric. So I remember, I went to Queens to go fetch my report. And Headmaster is trying to negotiate that. I've got nothing to say. Who's headmaster at this time? Hark. Hark. Yeah, I, I just don't like the way he treated my father through the whole thing. He didn't give my dad enough respect mm. and courtesy to say, let's wait for your son to come state his story. He mm. then decided this is how it's going to flow. Mm. You understand? Mm. And I think he had a naive mentality like was such that if he comes with that, he doesn't want to leave room for my defense, but he's not coming out right to say, I don't want him back. Mm. You understand? So it was just that. So, but I had gotten an offer from East London College to go study there and play for border under, under 19. Okay. And the East London College had a merger with Hamilton's rugby club to form Ham's Tech. So we were, so part of the deal, play for Ham's Tech and, and obviously provincial gave okay, you qualify. Uh -huh. So that's how I ended up in East London straight after school. Salamont played for Port in the 19. Oh, Bulldogs. London was a nice life. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I miss it so much. Okay, now bicycle. <laughs> bicycle in Sunderland. I, I lived at the beach. I did my training there. I did my thinking there. You know, bro, that's what I miss the most. Is that me time mm. at, the, at the beach. I miss that the most. The rugby was awesome. You know, I... The best rugby of my rugby career. Was in Islanda. Islanda. No, really, Pogo Pogo was who bought the Bulldogs. Yeah. Yeah. And now you just left Queen. So it's that build up to the 1999. So the journey there was straight after school, SA under 19, where the under 19 tournament in Romania. And then. You made SA under 19? Uh, yeah. And then it was. Then I missed SA under 21. So this is 95. You say under 19. Then I miss you say under, 19, under 21 in 95. I make it in 96 and 97. And then 97 also emerging Springboks with mm. the British and Irish Lions tour. Yeah. 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 Emerging Springboks and then injured for 98 the whole season. You never played rugby in oh. 98. I didn't play rugby in 98. Mm. And then I got an operation for the injury towards the end of the season in 98. That's when I eventually had the operation done. And then start of 99 was back in the mix. I guess you got injured in 1998. I was a lot of that all. We are from... Um, surgery. Only mm -hmm. the next year. Mm -hmm. I know. I was still in this London that time. But 99 was also a blessing, man, because you were poor at a, we're a hot team. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, the border team in '99 was just something next level. I, I don't think Border will ever produce a team like that ever again. Who was in that team? Um, you, up front we had Dillery Hooker. I'm on my feet, the underdog, and I won't be beat. Turn the lights up now. Welcome to the show. I ain't never. Are you a musician? My eyes on the prize until I die. I'm gonna rise. The Dreamstream Music Studio is now available on Sundays for only 295 rands per hour. It includes a 12-channel desk, a variety of mics and cables, electronic drum kit, and a laptop for recording. Terms and conditions apply and booking is essential. Contact studio at dreamstream.co.za for a site visit. Uh, Heinrich Kock, Prog. What other Prog? Swanee was also there, but benching. I just forget who the other Progs were. Then we had Andre Fox. We had Straha Porta. We had Anton Porter, we had Maria Swart. Yeah, it was a big pack, man. You know? Obo Rakobs. Kenika Koboshian were part of that mix. Okay. In the back line with John Bradbrook from New Zealand, who's come off. We had ooh, Miller, Craig Miller, fly off. Then it was myself at 12, Craig Echter at 13, sometimes myself at 12. Then we Nico Fenta makes the border senior side. So number 13. Now you've got two 23-year-olds in the midfield for the border. Ah. Oh, you couldn't you, you couldn't play against us. Nani unplayable. Ah, uh, myself and Palace. We mm. call him Palace. Like, so who's the best player who can play Lalana? I mean, professionally. Uvo ba. Hey, the team did Lalana. Yo, apa? It's just a nyani le out le. Was definitely Nico. Cause I made Springboks. He made Springboks Evans. Oh, okay, okay. Now we had a we had an understanding man. No Nico, because we're the same age, so we always room together on the travels. Yeah, well, we did everything together mm. in, in, in the team setup. So he, it got to a point where I didn't have to look where I'm passing. Yeah, so, yeah as because well. I can just feel him. Okay. But, yeah. Well, he, he, when he wants to make a switch, before he even says it, I already have a sense he wants to switch because I can see the flow of traffic in front and I know what his options are when, he, when this happens. Mm-hmm. So by the time I get the ball, I start my drift early because the Amazu Palace is going to come on the top line. Mm. And we just got to that level of telepathy. So it was, it was, it was the best part. I think that's it's one of the reasons why I made, made Springboks because Springbox. of that partnership. Yeah. Oh, people are Kaiser. When you're getting the call that you are a Springbok, I mean, a call no one had ever gotten or I mean, Omnyama. I in East London. So. David Maiza yeah, had been called up to Springbok Sevens, no John Bradbrook. So they went on camp, came back, life carries on as normal. But this prank starts. Got four o'clock XN phone call, or five XN or six XN. Congratulations, you just made the Springbok side. Because it's coming to that announcement, because there was going to be Tri Nations and then the World Cup. So it's coming to that period. So Is the prank coming good? So, no, the three of us. Oh. Yeah, but this prank going in a circle here. Oh, okay. Right? So, Dave would call John. Well done. And, uh, <laughs> it's like the girl. Like the girl's outfit. Yeah, well. You can go. I have tech check. Yeah, well. <laughs> so, this is happening. I get a phone call allegedly from a guy from the daily dispatch. He calls. And he says, congratulations. 
to drop the phone because I know what's following. You know? And also what I didn't understand is why you called it around half past six in the morning. Mm. You know? Because wait for me to wake up, go to the gym, you know, get my life going, and then you can tell me about this. But the thing was, everybody's obviously chasing that they're the first to break the news because this is the first African. Mm. Oh. You understand? So it, it's a bigger impact if you are the first to break it. Now to break it properly, it would be nice to have the interview with it mm. instead of just saying squad announcement and then now I've already seen it. By the time I'm doing the interviews, it's starting to get stale, right? So the guy phones are drop, phones again are drop. Eventually, I tell him the foot sack, and I drop. An hour later, I get a phone call from oh, Sid Lopes, who was the general manager at Border Rugby. Phones, and now I knew Om Sid's voice from Hello because I've sat in that office, you know, getting grilled over the coals for my discipline and all sorts. Mm. You know, it's one of the people I need to thank in my life for for being that father figure and mentor because I, things could have gone sideways at the same time in East London. Yeah, well, but people like Sid found a way to just keep me together. So when he said hello, I was like, oh no, I'm in trouble again. And it's got something to do with these phone calls I was getting. Yeah, well, so already I'm sweating. What have I done? And I'm trying to recall. Why I didn't go out last night. It was the night before. What could it be? How I'm doing. So he says, uh, why are you not picking up your phone? Did you for who? He says, no, somebody from the newspaper is trying to call you. For what? He says, what do you mean for what? I'm like, why is he trying to call me from the newspaper? For what? He says, oh. No, come to the office immediately. Don't talk to anybody. <laughs> Don't say hello to anyone. Just get into the office with immediate effect. So there I am on my bicycle. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, this could be a contract type mm, of thing. Okay. Yeah, well, because I've been talking to Porter Rugby about increasing my contract. And so I get on my bicycle, get to Basel Canyon, go to Sid's office, sit down, and he says, well done, my boy. Springbok. Mm. 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 So mm. I love her that I'm sitting talking crap. <laughs> and <laughs> he says, no, you've done it. So then he calls the guy from the Daily Dispatch. Well, okay, I've got Kai here. Now mm. you know, so you can interview him. So the guy asks, when you first got the call, what did you think? But then I first got the call from you, and I thought it was a prank. And I said, fuck off. Right? <laughs> and I told you to piss off. Right? <laughs> so in my inexperienced mind, I'm coming out with the honesty of the moment. Right? And I say to him, Carl, remember when you called me, I thought it was a joke. And I dropped the phone on you. Right? Newspaper headline. New Springbok selection, thought selection was a joke. Hi, bo. Uh, hi, bo. Now, here's the issue with this headline. The sensitivity of transformation mm. that's being forced from the minister's office. Then there was the culture systems that were implemented. So there's a whole lot that is going with this. And mm. now eventually, SA Rugby can find somebody who can at least be there on merit to serve what the government mandate is. Mm. You understand? It's a, so, so as forced as it is, because it had to be a conversation that you will include. But at the same time, it's almost like a saving grace because at least we know the caliber of what we're getting. Yeah. Right? So, obviously, narrative now is ah, he's only there because of the color of his skin. You understand? Mm. Now I come out and say, I thought this election is a joke. Meaning you didn't meaning, think now? No, meaning even he knows he doesn't deserve it. But the government is forcing the narrative. He's forcing the issue. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Now I must deal with that. And I must still explain over oh, this guy wrote and presented a narrative 
that was not what I was saying. Because if you go and read the rest of the story, he tells he then the says how you called and I dropped the phone. And the prank that was happening between myself, John and Dave. Mm. It's there in the story, but nobody sees that. You just see the headline. Yeah, the headline. I got a phone call. Yo, as soon as that thing was out, I got a phone call from Mr. Ricky. Come here with immediate effect. What the, Cape Town. What are you saying yeah. to people? Come here. Yeah. I get to Cape Town. I'm laughing now at this because yeah, now it's gotten funny to me. Mm. You know how quickly this thing became racial. Yeah, yeah, well. So I had to go a crash course in media training on how to respond to <laughs> how to respond to questions <laughs> right there on the spot. Ah. So, you went zoom quiet, you yeah, I had to try. So so from that point on, you know, I always had to be guarded mm. about my involvement in rugby, my impact in rugby, my contribution, because it is still a sport that at grassroots level, black people are still marginalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We still struggle for equal participation and therefore the transformation doesn't translate or transform into national setups on the basis of the demographics of South Africa. Mm -hmm. Maybe We're still serving numbers. Yeah. Maybe just a quick question Rakeza. when you say that and then obviously i think we all know systematically Zanzi, it's still very different to what we're kind of seeing in the national team and even in the national team it's a bit because of the influence of one person versus the system actually churning out these people when you see this team what goes through your head Especially Apusuga Corner where you are probably alone, very isolated, very alienated. And then you see Lenny team where it, 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 it feels very representative of the real South Africa. Um obviously I look at it with a with some level of pride that we are moving in the right direction when it comes to that. Mm. But also, let's not be fooled to think that we've arrived at that level. Because at the moment, there's still the balance of numbers. We still have a cap mm. of so many in the squad, right? But the fortunate aspect of the coaches that need to make those decisions is that there are quality players that are actually there on merit. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So for Mumna, the move forward is to eventually get to a 23-man squad that is all black or all white. But that all black or all white side is truly representative of South Africa in the rugby landscape because they are all there on merit having been picked out of a system that offers equal opportunity for everyone to partake in. Mm. and I'm not just talking on the playing field administratively yeah. and otherwise mm. you get what I'm saying it's still far from there yeah. there's still a lot of games being played behind the scenes where we the minority are marginalized and are not given equal opportunity Maybe it'll happen for our kids, I don't know, but we are not truly transformed to the level that says we are all South Africans, born equal, mm. afforded equality. Yeah, yeah. We're still not there yet, but we hide it under the guise of a successful Springbok side. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but I, I'm sure we, 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 will, we will move in the right direction. With time, yeah. Where, where, where did you start? Um, when did you retire Prof. Carlo Rugby after you had made come with the Springboks? And yeah, so fine enough, eh? Um, <laughs> I probably started coaching when I was four or five. <laughs> when I decided to <laughs> with the simulation, it was always there, was okay. Being, uh, coaching, <laughs> but formally. I started coaching 
a Queens under 15 C's when I was playing second. Oh, Sessa so, so Queens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was my first formal team that I coached into a fixture. <laughs> okay, mm. and then professionally? Yeah. And then when I left Queens, I had a project in Tanzan, yeah, under 13s. Um, that I was roped into by Hyundai at the time because they were my sponsors. So they were sponsoring a yeah, rugby program, Ilkas. Mm. So I got into coaching there as well. And then I left East London to come to Joburg, play for the Lions. Then I moved to Poch to play for the Leopards. That's where my retirement came from, uh, from a knee injury. Mm. So the Leopards and the and the University of Northwest, which is Eagles now, it was back then, absorbed me into the coaching system. Um, so I had a, a role of mentoring the non-white kids that were coming out of school into the university, um, assistant coach with the second team, assistant coach with the uh, Leopards. No, I was head coach of the Leopards and the amateur side. So that was the formal into professional coaching path. Came to the Lions under development um, in the townships and then Springbok women at some point, um, Lions at some point. Springbok women, were, were you head coach, Papa Case? No, I was assistant. Oh, assistant, yeah. okay. I okay. Was assistant coach. So yeah, that was the yeah, coaching journey. Had 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 its uh, perks and high points. Because wa 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 at a young age, um, when you retired from the rugby, it was in, you didn't fall in any kind of depression or anything like that. Because uh, the I'm coaching sure gig on. Eh? I'm sure I did, man. So I just maybe refused to to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I coped with it the best way I could at the time. Because my end of career, unfortunately, came at the end of my first marriage. So it was just a whole lot of things, mm. you know, falling into this pot at the same time. Mm. So at the same time, you know, getting injured and retiring because of injury and falling into a position of responsibility so quickly, I think also became my saving grace. Um, the platform I got from the Leopards in the University of Northwest was so good such that I probably would have been very near a Springbok coaching position had it come at a time of total focus and ambition. Mm. At the time, it came simultaneously with a, mm. I just need to cope through this phase. Mm. Yeah, well. And so it took me years to find a path that says, let me find my purpose, my real purpose. Um, let me enrich my spirituality, my mentality. You know, it took me years to get to that point. It took me years to get over that, to those disappointments. Um, it's just that at the time this was happening, consulting psychologists and, you know, it was not the counseling norm. and all of that, it wasn't the norm. It wasn't the first place I would have gone to. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it would have helped if I'd done it. Mm. You understand? Um, because you you go through these things damaging your your spirituality, your emotions, your mentality for such a long time that you actually don't even see it until something of meaning and purpose comes across mm. and you realize, oh, I'm actually not even ready for this. I must start from scratch to get ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. So yeah. It was uh, it it was tough lessons, but not regrettable because the the level of wisdom I've been able to get to as a result, I wouldn't exchange it for for anything. I wouldn't go back and not walk that path mm -hmm. because my deep sense of 
uh, helping other people, I think is also rooted in that. Um, so if things were just easy and they flowed and I had everything I wanted, I probably wouldn't care about development, about rural life, and 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 so. No regrets. No regrets. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you are not mistaken, broadcasting. Mm. Broadcasting, eh. <laughs> I start my very first game that I commentated on was when I was injured in 2000. And I got a call from here, from uh, where we work now, to say there's an under 20 game at Loftus. Would I mind going to commentary? Okay. Strange call, but <laughs> let's give it a go. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right? And I remember oh, Gerald de Kock was the commentator in that game. And got there. So what's the story? So yeah, this is easy. Just tell people how the action just happened. Mm. That's, that's all you do. Mm. Um, so, and then obviously, um, from a coaching background, it was easy for me to do. So I did the first game with them. Afterwards, he was like, "Why don't you look at this as a girl? Because you are very good." Oh, okay. Thank you for the compliment. Then two thousand three World Cup, I get a magazine show. On his ABC with Dave O'Sullivan, and that was such a success. But it's easy for CBC because numbers are natural. Mm. That thing was such a success that they called me back for the 2007 World Cup as well. But the actual commentary had been started, and then obviously 2007, right up until 2011. I didn't get much involvement in this space. So 2011, I've stopped coaching. Not sure what I want to do with my life, but I'm not in a happy space. Um, new relationship, it's just a lot. I'm unemployed. And so I got a gig as a health and safety officer in a mine in Rustenburg. So mm. I was going underground in 2011. Mm. And I get a phone call from the late Count Antunja. I case. He Supersport is looking to expand closer commentary. Would you be interested? Definitely. Okay, come give it a try. Then I was given a game, no black. So myself and Una Zulono, I was started at the same time. Same time. Mm. Yeah, so he was my anchor, I was the analyst. And so the big nervous point was um if you get stuck, what then? No, just flow. If you can't remember the the word in in uh, it's closer, just go English. Like we normally chat as guys. Mm -hmm. So it started like that and it took off. So twenty twelve I tended my resignation in the mine. I, I mining mining is not the safest thing you can do. <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I really respect people that that work on the underground. Oh, And yeah, it's been broadcasting since coaching also. Um, you yeah. have a son up here. I've got lots of kids. Um, so my wife now had two boys when I met her and I had two girls and then decided to get married again and now we've got Apiwa. So Apiwa is the most famous person in the house because <laughs> he's the last born. Yeah. And all attention goes to him and so much so that people think Apiwa is the only child we have. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he's got much older siblings. Um, yeah, so it's quite a big family. Would you want Apiwe to go the rugby route? 
Um, will you be there to encourage it more I've, than anything? I've already realized that it has nothing to do with me because he is the one that pushes the narrative of being a rugby player like his father. Mm. And it's not a conversation I've had with him. Mm. Um, I don't know exactly when I put, picked up that I played rugby. Um, whether it's because he saw I was watching it a lot and therefore started asking the questions, I can't pinpoint it exactly. So even though he does whatever sports activities are, are available, let's call it, if you... If he's talking to anybody who's come to visit us at home or whoever has time to spend with him, he says he plays rugby like his father. But he hasn't started playing rugby. <laughs> <laughs> because they don't have it at his school. But he plays in the backyard. Mm. So that is the one thing that he keeps saying. That mm. That's what he wants to do. And no, nobody says, nah, you're not going to do that. Or, yeah, you must definitely, this is, yeah, no. It's just, it goes, we'll run with the flow. With the flow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, just run with the flow. Rakeza, man, I, I don't want to keep you long. Okay? Mm-hmm. But, Rakeza has been training since 2020. Year started. Mm-hmm. Since 2024 started, Rakeza has been training, um... For the 1965 ride, mm-hmm. can you tell us about that, Prakiza? And I know it's for education, mm-hmm. and how people, maybe our viewers as well, can help and assist. Okay, so a 1965 ride is in its 14th year. Um, it's just basically a group of guys that got together as amateur cyclists decided, eh, could we entice people to support a trip from Joburg? to Queenstown, um, whether you donate per kilometer or you donate towards the entire trip or however. So they found ways to break it down so people could support it. And the main reason for this was to raise funds to support um, some of the schools in Queenstown. So the funding goes to facility maintenance, it goes to bursaries, now it's expanded to even helping kids that are done with matric and want to go to university or their university, mm. but now the parents can't take them further. You know, so it's that kind of it's developed into that kind of initiative. So um, this year marks thirty years since I left Queens in ninety four. So I wanted to do something significant um, to commemorate the thirty years. That since I've been at school, and also, um, obviously, the Queens did a, a massive honor by naming a grandstand in the main field after mm-hmm. after my name, um, which is you know a legacy for my family to come, um, generations to come. Mm-hmm. And so, how does one get involved um, in, in in assisting wherever we can, and you know wherever we're able? So this was one of the easiest ways to get involved quickly and easy, even though it's not easy physically, but mm. um, hard work has never killed anyone. So yeah. Um, so this also coincides with a time in my life when I've introspected in terms of my well-being um, physically and spiritually. And so I'd started a journey a few years back where at the start of each year I'll start off with a fast and then I'll carry on with the year but I've noticed over the years that I'd fast for whatever period I've set out and then straight after that fast it's almost like I didn't fast you know I've gained nothing in wisdom and spirit in in spirit and emotions Mm. then it's just a repeated cycle so this year was quite different a fasting process um, because with my fasting I started running and I lost oh, I lost over 20 kgs eh? mm. just with that over 20 I lost over 20 kgs I think like when I when I saw you at Kez the Kez first I was like yeah, so yeah like you, you yeah. look very lean yeah. compared to what we see on TV uh, so I'm oh, I'm quite happy 
with where I'm at in in terms of my weight, in terms of just my journey right now. Okay. It it it's put me in a space where I'm really focused on finding my purpose. I know my purpose is within the space of helping others. I know it's there. So how do I get involved in meaningful initiatives and leave a legacy, leave an impact, basically? Mm. So the the ride is a beneficiary of that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we're leaving next week. When is the tenth? Tuesday or Wednesday? Friday the tenth. Yeah. Yeah, How day, many days Sunday. does it get to eight go? days of Ooh. cycling? Joe back yeah. to Queenstown. Queenstown. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's Queenstown to East. Uh, I mean, there's East London to Queenstown. It's a two day trip. Two day trip. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard a lot about the Cape Town Queenstown one, which would be interesting because if 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 that is carrying on, that's my next project. Cape Town yeah. Queenstown. Yeah. Oof. My next project. But the purpose of it, more than the physical challenge of it, is um, it always resonates me with where I come from. Ezwat, Bilal, there's nothing. There's a lot in Gogo that have become crime hotspots. Oh. You understand? People are no live no longer living in harmony and peace because it's a community of young people who wake up every morning and there's nothing to do. Mm. They don't know what exists on the other side of those mountains. And alcohol is readily available, but it costs money. So let me go rob because Ukraine just got his grant. Right? Now these crimes are escalating killings to rapes to so life at Lali I remember growing up you always looked forward to going back to Lali mm. for the peace it offered for the wisdom you're gonna get for the love from elderly mm. that you receive the acceptance that you know it it was awesome knowing I'm Delali this mm. weekend Delali in this weekend is a point of dread for a lot of people because these guys because they need to get the next beer you know they oh, it's, it's it's just poverty mm. on steroids mm. that is just breeding fertile ground for crime yeah right so how do I go back and develop activity initiatives that says this age group can mm. stay busy yeah with something meaningful there's more for you guys you get what i'm saying so yeah that, that's that, that's that's why i do things like this now mm. it's amazing and if it's from that is uh and donate to 1965 yes please go to 1965 on google you will come up on the web page and it will show you previous rides um, what um, the initiative is all about its history what it benefits who it benefits and then right at the bottom, um, how to donate towards the ride, and it will pop up forms that you fill in. Uh, yeah. Bank account details are there. Just don't forget you're supporting me, the rider. So put my name there as reference, <laughs> and then it will reflect on the statement as money donated towards me specifically. The reason for that is that to participate, you must raise a minimum of thirty thousand okay. rands to, to to take part in the ride. And so if you put that reference there, it goes towards what I've been able to raise. Mm. So putting my name there doesn't mean it comes to my bank account. <laughs> mm. I don't even see the money. Yeah. <laughs> it goes straight to the fund. And uh, But the people running the fund can be able to see if I've reached my target, that target of 30,000 rands and then I'm allowed to cycle. Okay. Yeah. So there's still a few days to go. I'm still short. Not by much. I'm still short though. Okay. But it's always nice to go over the mark. So I, I think I need about 11 still mm -hmm. to make my 30. So, yeah, in the next nine days, I'd appreciate 11K. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> the heroes, Nazo, can help out. Please donate to U Prakeza. Uh, the 1965 cycle tour. Yeah, 1965. No, 11,000. It's nice. Um. Uh, man, guys, man, please. 
Okay, do you have any other questions for Rupa? Okay. No, no, just gratitude okay. and uh, say thank you for being part of the conversation. Siabulela Ubuzos Buona and Siabulela no Kebisa Ababugele Makaya with your story. It's it's a very intense story, it's a very insightful story. Just Abandaba Nins are very familiar with it, but I guess hearing it from you mm -hmm. is very different. Mm -hmm. So Siabulela Mkulu. Siabulela Prakeza. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, please leave a comment. Um, and yeah, please share. And this is Kamalotana, the father, the springbok, the husband, a hero. Mm -hmm. And uh, the inspirational man. That South has African icon. Icon. <laughs> Evulainlela for everyone, including Okoli, Seabu, when you say World Cup is it too. So thank you so much, guys. Okay. All right, and that's it. We're out. Show sure, Brakeza.